Hey YouTube, Mike the Renai Guy here. How we all doing? I know a lot of you are not doing very well, especially in Texas and the surrounding states with that storm that hit. So today's video, I am going to explain it. Since it's gonna be a little bit longer, I'm going to try to explain and show you what you can do to protect your Renai tankless heater. Now, for those of you that I spoke to, that I messaged, um, and those of you that I, I could help, um, again, you know, we feel very sorry for what had happened. I'm glad I was there to help you. For those of you that I couldn't help, I hope that you got some kind of resolve out of it. So, again, um, my email will be below. Email me. Um, a question, I'll send you my number and I'll go over it with you. Because I think from last Friday to last night, like one in the morning, I have done about 167 between comments, messages, and phone conversations. So, today's video um, is going to be on how to protect a unit. Now, we have an exterior unit here, which pretty much 90% of all of the questions that I got were on of course exterior units but I did get quite a few interior units that the piping and the unit froze and broke so this video is going to be for both even though it's an exterior I will explain about an interior and we're going to go through all steps of different scenarios that you might encounter with a freezing condition or a storm that you can do to protect this tankless Okay, I'm going to start off with, I have three videos out there. One video is on how to protect your tankless heater, your Renai tankless, during a storm. It shows how to power it up, battery backup, what to do. We're going to go over some of those steps. So go back into those videos and look. I also have a video on a battery backup system called Yugo. Um, so you can look at that video and I actually have it installed in my house and we show how it operates then I have another video out there which has what they call the freeze protection kit I'm going to show the kit but go back in my video and you can see the actual installation a unit hanging and piped and explained but I'll show the parts and explain how it works all right what happened as you know, or if you don't know, water is non-compressible. So when it freezes, it greatly expands. And, uh, you know, I'm from Florida, but I'm not originally from Florida. I'm from New York. So for those of you out there that um, have, have lived through this, that experience, so have I. In New York, we have had years of freeze-ups, and I have seen cast iron boilers break when they freeze. So you can't stop this water from what it's going to do, but you can prevent it. All right, first thing, tank, Rod I tankless heaters have two means of protection before it could freeze up. Now let's just take the front cover off and I'll, I'll show it to you. These units are designed that they have ceramic heaters in them. So this little piece right here, let me zoom the camera in. Okay, this little piece right here, there's another one in the back. There's one here and there's one back here. It's a ceramic heater. When the temperature drops, it starts to activate and it starts heating up the copper. The second uh, means of protection is that the unit will fire and shut off, fire and shut off. It'll heat up the heat exchanger. But that's only if you have power. If you don't have power, the thing is completely dead. So what do you want to do? All right, we're going to go through a couple of different things that you can do, not in any particular order. All right, the first thing that you want to do is you want to shut the water off to the unit. Now, again, outside unit, inside unit, I 
talked to people and saw pictures of both frozen. So this is going to be for both. You want to shut the water off, the blue handle valve right here. Now, of course, it's a brand new heat exchanger, uh, excuse me, it's a brand new valve kit that I'm using for demonstration purposes. So you want to shut off the valves here and here. You will now stop the water from entering the tankers. But that is not the, that's not the only step you have to do. There's still water in the tankless. It's still pressurized. There's still pressure in the tankless. You want to pop this relief valve right here. So you want to pop this valve. Now, of course, if it's an inside unit, may, now a lot of them were in an attic. The relief pipes, they have a drain pan. The relief pipes are piped outside. Make sure that you're not dumping water onto the ground. A, lot of the, a couple of them were inside the garages. They might not be popped out, so you got to watch this pipe. Make sure it's not just dead around the floor because you're going to get water on the floor. So, let's just say you put a bucket underneath it, all the pipe is piped outside the house. Open up this, you're going to drain water out. But that's still not going to get all the water out of the tankless. Any little bit of water that's trapped inside of this copper line, we're going to take the camera off and we're going to show you how the heat exchanger, because this is the heat exchanger, this is the burner, this is the heat exchanger. This is a copper heat exchanger that cracked and breaks. All one of these lines, one of these pipes, one of these connections here will freeze, expand, and blow out the screw actually. So, you got the water off, you got the relief valve open. What you want to do, I'm going to zoom in again. Give me a second here, okay. All right, what you want to do is open up your service ports, both hot and cold. Open up the service port valves. You're going to get more water draining out of that. Then you want to put a, like a, ho a short hose here and you can blow through it. Blowing water into the blue and out it will go into the red. If not, you take a compressor. You take your compressor with an air gun on it, a little air chock piece on it, and blow air. Not, don't put like 100 pounds into it, just spurts of air into the cold, and it'll blow out this red here. And then in turn, that will completely drain the heat exchanger of the tankless. So now the tankless is safe and drained. Now, of course, before you do that, you want to shut the gas off and you want to unplug the unit. Now, for an interior unit, you're going to have a plug built onto the unit. But for an exterior unit, it might be a plug, it might be a switch, it might be one of those knife switches inside of like a black or a gray box that you have to open and pull out a black tab that has four copper tabs on it that makes it's like a fuse or you may have to go to the circuit breaker panel and shut the breaker off that's marked tankless I know a lot of years had you new homes and your circuit is going to be a, a, a direct circuit and you're going to find a circuit breaker so you want to kill the power you want to shut the gas off okay but if you kill the power the unit's not working period no power it ain't working. And as you know, you lost power. It wasn't working. So that is your, your line of defense for the tankless heater if it fails. Now, let's do this now. We'll take the camera off. I'll show you the heat exchanger. Give me a second here. All right, so here's your heat exchanger. You see you have copper lines that go down. You have a cold water line here that goes up. You have hot water. This is a mixing valve back here. This is your hot water line. So here is your hot water valve. There's your cold water valve. And you see all the little turns here? You got all little twists and turns in the heat exchanger? All, that could all crack. Now, as you can see, it's very difficult to try to j even JB weld it. I do not advise trying to solder it. I know people have, but you, this heat exchanger has to come out. And since it's broken, if you're taking it out, you might as well replace it. 
Then the heat exchanger, the heat exchanger goes underneath here. You can look at my video on how to replace a heat exchanger. And you can actually see with the inside, there's all little sharp fins that absorb the heat. Carbon monoxide from the burner goes through it, heats it up, and then it exhausts right from here. All right? All right, let me get the camera back. And I'm going to show now protecting the surrounding piping and the actual unit. Give me a second here. Let me switch this camera thing around. All right. Now, let's get this door back on so we can now go with this type of unit. Now, on an exterior unit is going to be what is, it's going to be the probably the most vulnerable to weather. So let's just get this back on so that the door don't fall off. There we go. So, now. You want to protect this unit that's outside. Well, on most of the, uh, uh, pretty much all of the jobs, and it's to code, these pipes down here are going to be insulated. And they're going to be insulated with a foam insulation. Okay? It's about a half inch thick. It's usually split. Some of them have plastic in here that you peel off. There's glue, and it slips over the pipe to protect the pipe from freezing but even with the insulation you're still going to get air impingement onto the pipe now they you don't cover the valve kits because the valve kit needs to be serviceable so all they cover with this insulation and as you can see on your your houses is they just cover this the pipe and the pipe going to the wall so that's what you find <clears throat> now what's going to protect this cold this hot and of course it's not a perfect installation they even they do make fittings and you can find them at home depot and lowe's and ace hardware they make elbows and tees they're like four or five bucks a piece and then they're, they're not going to put them and not buy them so what can you do well they make this insulation tape rubberized and then they make this foam let me open it up they make this um, actually it's almost like fiberglass insulation and it's um, 25 feet and you can then con continue to wrap what over the insulation wrap the valve kit wrap up against the wall get that wrapped use this foam this foam is 30 feet it is adhesive it's almost like weather stripping but it's pipe insulation foam you would use that to go around when you make a turn so you got a straight piece and then an l another piece well when you bend that you use this foam to insulate that part so you can use both of these then to hold it on real good, when we insulate, we use Gorilla Glue. Uh, excuse me, Gorilla Tape. Well, same thing, Gorilla Glue, Glue Tape. We use the black Gorilla Tape. And that makes a great joint. Plus, it's very weather resistant. Okay, now, as you can see here, air will get into this. These slots here are designed for the cold air, the air to get sucked into the fan, go into the burner, make combustion, and then the exhaust gets pushed out here. Well, if regular air gets in there, minus degree air or single digit air is going to get in there. So, what can you do? Now, of course, if you lost power, you it's not working. Again, Shut off the water, shut off the gas, shut it, pull out, or disconnect the electric. What you can do, let me grab my, I'll actually use my, the moving blanket here. You can then blanket your tankless heater. It's not going to, it's not working. It's not going to, it's not working. There's no need to have it on. You have no power. You have no water. You can insulate the tankless heater. So just take that moving blanket, as many blankets as you can, Grab one of these cinch cords 
okay, that you can adjust and tighten and then take this, tuck it all under, get it up to here, put it together, get, your, get it all tucked in, you understand what I mean, pull it and now of course you get this all tucked in, use as many as you can, use bungees, use rope, use twine, wire, whatever. Insulate your tankless. Get this thing so that it is covered in a horse blanket, a blanket. So you now covered this tankless up and it's protected. But what you want to do is you want to make a note somewhere. You shut the circuit breaker off. Put a piece of paper on the circuit breaker panel. Tankless is covered. Remove cover. Put it on the door that leads to the outside. Put it on your door that leads from your house to the garage. Put it anywhere. Just make a note and keep put it somewhere that this thing is covered. Because if it turns on, just say you didn't turn the gas and the water off, you just turned the circuit breaker off. Well, if you say, oh, I got power, I got water, it's now 40 degrees out, you turn the circuit breaker on, you turn the tap on, what's gonna happen, it's gonna fire and car the carbon monoxide ain't going nowhere. So make a note of it. Put it in multiple places. I can't stress that enough. All right, so, and put as many as you need to put on there. It'll, it'll keep the tankless warm because it'll build up heat underneath this and that will keep it warm. All right, what else can you do? Well, Moving water will not freeze. So when water is moving, it won't freeze. Now, under, under extreme conditions, yes it will. But in the conditions that most of you have been through, and I have been through, th that type of water won't. So, you lost power or you didn't lose power. Say you used the power still on. Shut the circuit breaker off. Go over to the controller. Let me grab a controller. So you see, because most of these units were the RL series or the V series. They weren't a higher end um, RU or RUR series. So go over to the controller. If it's an interior model, it's going to be mounted in the door. If it's an exterior mounted, it's going to be seen in your garage, in your pantry, in your closet, in your bathroom, kitchen, wherever. And shut the tankless off. Just hit the on off button. It would be also good to find the power source and shut off the power because you're not going to be using it. Now, temperature drops when the sun goes down, period. So later in the day, the temperature drops. So you're going to bed, go and turn a tap on in your house, hot and cold water. Don't let it run fully, just let it run a little bit. You're going to be moving water through the tankless heater. So water will be entering the cold, go back down the hot, and come out your faucet. That moving water will not freeze. Okay, now, I have had, I've talked to people that when they FaceTime me, they had the insulation on the cold, on the hot, going back to the wall, and it still froze, but it froze and it didn't break. Now, what you can do is a lot of times it's frozen right there. Most of your houses, and especially the ones that I talked to, were slab homes, like here in Florida. The hot and the cold water piping it all under the ground. But there are some pipes that come out and go up. Some were in the garage, some were outside, coming out of the wall and into the tankless. Get yourself a heat gun or get yourself a hairdryer and you can pull some of the insulation back, most likely it was frozen right here when it comes out of the wall. Now, in some cases, if the job wasn't roughed in correctly, the water lines, instead of being in the middle of the eight inch foundation, were closer to the outside and they froze. So by hitting it with a hairdryer or a heat gun, moving it back and forth, back and forth, dislodged the ice. When you're doing that, 
you want a faucet on in the house. So now, you have a tankless just like this, sitting on the side of your house, hot and cold water pipe coming out of the wall, and 12 inches of pipe going up. There is insulation on it, it looks real pretty. But you have no hot water coming out of your tap. Well, leave one or two faucets on in your house, hot water. Even though nothing's coming out, or you may get like even a trickle, that means water is moving. No water, it's frozen solid. But if it's moving a little bit, water is, will trickle. And just think about when you dump ice in your sink and then you turn the water on, the ice just starts melting really quick. Even if it's really cold water, the ice will melt. Anything warmer than the ice will make the ice melt. So moving water will start to melt and diminish the ice inside the pipe long as the pipe, of course, didn't break. So you're hitting it with a hairdryer. Again, or a heat gun, you're moving it back and forth. Now, most of your people are gonna find three different types of pipe. You're gonna find either PEX tubing, which is like multi, maybe multicolored, red, blue, clear. It's very bendable. You're gonna find CPVC, which is this, kind of almond color. Or you're gonna find copper. If you have copper tubing, water piping, you can use that heat gun, you can use that hair dryer, you ain't melting it. CPVC and PEX, yes, PEX is designed that when you hit it with a heat gun, it does turn white, it will kind of deform when you take the heat away, and some of it has a memory and it goes back. So you want to move it, and you want to direct it down to somewhere over here, but with that faucet, you have somebody inside that house, and as soon as you start getting flow, shut off the heat gun and turn on the taps in your house. Because now more and more water will rush through the tankless, melting the remaining ice. Because as that ice starts to melt, it's going to go up into the filter of the tankless. You want to diminish that. Okay? So, now... Uh, we'll get into the heat exchangers in a minute, the freeze protection. All right. A lot of you got what they call the boiled water. Excuse me, let me light my cigar here. You got a boiled water advisory. Okay, what is that? Well, in states that aren't set up for extreme cold weather, the water piping, utility piping, is close to the surface. Here in Florida, you can pretty much almost kick the ground and hit a water pipe. In New York, where we were from, water mains were four feet down. Three foot was the frost level. You put them down four feet. So water mains, main lines, feeding whole communities, freeze and rupture. When they break, water is passing down the pressure side into the non-pressure side, so downstream. But it's bringing in all of that debris, dirt, sand, rock, coquina, whatever, into the water pipe. So it is contaminating it. So they shut down, they get there, they dig it up, they repair it, but all that junk has gotten downstream. Where is it gonna end up? It's gonna end up somewhere in your house. So that's why they tell you before you drink your water, cook with your water, boil it, and it's always good to boil it, then put it in the refrigerator or freeze it, let it freeze, then thaw it. A lot of people don't do that because it takes a lot of time. That's why I keep 10 cases of water in my closet. God forbid something like that happens. I have 10 cases of water for three of us. We have more than enough water um, to, and then of course we, we can boil it. So, but what else does that do? Well, it puts debris into the inlet filter. Again, go back in my videos, you'll see cleaning, removing of an inlet filter. And all tankless heaters have an inlet filter built in right here. Let me, um, I think I have a broken one right here. Give me a second. I do. So, this is a broken one. It's one I use for demonstration. It's crushed up, but that's the filter. And then that's the plug that's in it. And this goes into here like that, of course, if it was straight. And that is your filter. So that's got to be removed. 
so that you can clean out that filter and get out any of the sand or debris that was in there because what it's going to do it's going to diminish the water flow going into the tankless heater and it's then may not activate correctly because you're not getting the right water flow even though you might have two or three taps on okay so let's just say you just have a basic storm just a storm the temperature out is 70 degrees you have a storm what you want to do is you want to unplug the tankless heater shut off the power interior you're going to unplug it exterior again if there's a plug a knife switch a switch a circuit breaker shut it off when the power comes back on then plug it back in don't leave it plugged in during a storm again go back in my video on how to protect the tankless during a storm power surge when they get the power back on poles up transformer replaced wires back up and turned on substation turns on the power that surge can blow the pc board okay so unplug that now let's show the freeze protection again go back in my video and look at this so it is and i'll put it in the comments below in the description it is a 104000059 freeze protection kit now what does it have it has four things inside of it two three four okay the first thing that it has is a three quarter inch normally closed solenoid valve wiring this goes on the cold water side of the feed to the tankless then you tie the hot water in with a T and then another T and then that T goes to this solenoid valve which is quarter inch which is called the normally open solenoid valve again wiring now what does that mean normally closed normally open when this thing has no power this solenoid right now is normally closed and again from my video you see I have arrows on this thing you see the arrows that was for my demonstration so this solenoid right now is normally closed when you put power to it the magnet this is the magnet will open up the solenoid this one here right now is open when you put power to it it closes this solenoid goes on the cold this solenoid goes here this is the drain off solenoid so both are attached so it's attached to the cold you siamese it into the hot with another t coming down the middle then you install another t off the cold water to this vacuum breaker which will then go up right here of course all piping is insulated And then it has a wiring harness with fuse plugs because there is a, a, a part of the wire harness that's called that says freeze protect on it so it all gets wired into that what happens you lose power this solenoid closes this solenoid opens this solenoid's got a pipe going down to the floor it's tied into the hot hot cold vacuum breaker air gets sucked into the vacuum breaker goes onto the top of the heat exchanger and drains the entire heat exchanger hot and cold side onto the floor you have no more water in the heat exchanger so what i explained to you about shutting off opening up opening the relief valve blowing through it pushing air through it with a compressor this kit the 104 again who makes up these numbers will do this no matter what it is inside outside as long as this quarter in solenoid the outlet side so the outlet side is that side right here because you see the arrow as long as it's that is directed to some type of drain it will drain the entire tankless down so look into it um, it's about I think 500 for 450 
plus install but again it is it's a good kit to have in case god forbid this happens again all right so now none of this happened you didn't do any of this your heat exchanger broke all right you could try to jb weld it I, again again unless you really are good with a torch and solder it's going to be very hard for you to solder especially if the leak okay, let's take this off again especially if the leak is inside because a lot of you know some people sent me photos and i facetimed them that and i'm going to put this back here so i stopped working on it their leaks were um at the turn let me grab my little pointer so they were somewhere back here i had one guy his leak was here that's a very easy see fix once you get the ice out of it bend the metal back you can use JB Weld, you can use that silicon tape, something that'll get the unit operating so you can have hot water until a serviceman can come and replace the heat exchanger. But to replace this heat exchanger, this entire unit has to be removed. I have a video on that on how to replace a heat exchanger. Now, a lot of people went out and bought new units. And I know a lot of them waited better two hours at a supply house online waiting to get parts and I know a lot of parts are getting very 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 scarce in your state and that we're trying to get parts out there to you um, for uh, repair but if you're going to replace the unit it's very simple because now this one's an RL 94 pretty much every single unit that I talk to people that I messaged or talked to that was the size of their unit, an RL-94. And most of it were E, exterior, N, natural. The other unit will be an RL-94I, interior, and natural. Or if it's propane, there'll be a P on the end for propane. So it'll be an IP or an EP, IN or an EN. This is very easy. I mean, it's not very easy, but this is easier than the interior. The interior has that vent. If it's roof vented, two people, once you disconnect the cold, the hot, the gas, and unplug it, you take your screws out. As you can see, there's a center hanging screw. Then there's one screw here, one screw there, and then one screw and one screw. So it's a total of five screws. This screw right here, and let me zoom in. Hold on. That screw right there is the hanging screw. So that screw, I'm a little screwy here. Hold on, let me get this back, there we go. So we put that screw in first, not tight all the way. Then we hang the unit, put a level on it, and then put our four other screws in. So that screw will hold the tankless up until you get it level and get it back on. So you remove those four screws, pull off the unit. You're gonna have to have two people, especially if it's a roof vented one. And then you just put the new unit back up, get it into the vent first. And what you're going to find, let me show you, let me, let me I'll remove the valve kit. and show you because when you buy the new unit you're going to get a new valve kit but most of these units were under two years old so let me just remove this and then I'll show you what you're going to entail here so this is a valve kit this is the cold water side of a valve kit oh let me get it back together here <coughs> Now let me take off the unnecessary pipes. <clears throat> so, this is the cold water side of the valve kit. This is going to be off. This side is going to be on. So once you shut off this, and the, now the red side, the only difference is it's got the relief valve. You don't need to remove everything. 
So once you undo the gas, and as you can see, you can undo the union. Let me zoom in here. Let me get it down and zoom in. There we go. So, and we don't need the wire in here no more. I just put it in there for. You're going to shut the gas off. You're going to undo your union. Unscrew your T. Maybe there's an elbow. Maybe it's a flex. Your nipple and cap. Put it back up. Tighten it up with some compound. Test it with soap. That's your gas. Now, your valve kit. Your valve kit, you can leave on. So this is still going to be on your pipe. This will still be on your pipe. Okay? Going to your tankless. You're going to undo the union, which will now free up your pipe. Bear in mind that both hot and cold have that washer. Some of the washers get fit there and then over and then some of the washers actually go on to you see the little the little uh, recess there some of the washers go on the recess you take the old unit down you unscrew both of these union halves cold hot make them up onto the new unit when you hang it back it's gonna go right back in the same screw it's gonna be the exact same footprint and then all you do is just pick your lines back up to the union and well, I'm going to tighten the other side but tighten your union up a little bit of compound a pair of channel locks and you tightened it tighten both sides turn your water on slowly check for leaks that's it that's how you replace it the venting is going to be the hardest now if it's an outside unit there's no vent so it's very simple just undo your water pipe undo your gas of course remember gas is off water is off you can leave all this here. Leave everything there. You can leave the relief pipe on. Now, you might, if it's a lot of pipe, you might have to support it. You might have to get some rope and hold it up because this is going to have a little weight to it. It's going to bend. It could crack the pipe. Copper, it's going to stay rigid. PEX will bend. CPVC, eh. You got to be careful again when you're picking the unit up not to bang into the pipe. You could crack it. So, that's all. That's, all, that's, that's your replacement. Hang the unit back. If it's an outside unit, just hang it back, put the screws back in, the unions, you're going to do it on the workbench or on a table, and then you just put your water pipes back up and reassemble your gas. Then you can go to Home Depot and buy, um, they, they make a small little pint of uh, soap leak detection, it's got a bulb thing on it, you unscrew it, you smush it around the joints, it'll bubble. Take Dawn, mix Dawn up inside of a, 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 a rubber, a, a container, a plastic container. Get a small paintbrush, get bubbles, bubble up the joints. It'll tell you if you got a gas leak. Then, before you plug the unit back in or turn the gas back on, once you got the water back on, if it's an outside unit, pop the relief valve. That'll bleed out the tankless heat exchanger. Then go inside and bleed out all your faucets, hot water. Of course, if you turn your cold water off, do the cold water too. You want to bleed that out. You want to get all the air out of the system. You don't want to start up this system and have air because it's just going to make a mess spurting out all over the place. So bleed out your faucets. Water runs clean. Water runs clear. Come outside or inside, whether it's an inside-outside. Turn your gas back on. Plug it in or turn your power back on. Turn your on off if it's an inside unit. You're going to turn the on off button on. Most likely it'll go to 104. Hit the up arrow till it goes to that temperature you had it set at. And then go and turn on faucets in your house. Have somebody tell you if this, see where it says right here, in use? There'll be a red light there. Right here where it says priority, there's another little bulb. You see there's a little circle there? That's always going to stay green. That means that this controller is the priority controller. This in-use one, this right, 
there will turn on when you're using the tankless heater, meaning in use. So they just yell, or you yell down to them, okay, it's working, go to the next one, go to the next one, go to the next one. If, if it's a bathroom with two sinks and a tub, two sinks, a tub, and a shower, turn them all on. You're in the bathroom. Let them all bleed out. Test it. It'll go to low fire, go to high fire. So, all right. Um, there is other little freeze protection pieces in here. This right here, this yellow wire, here I'll actually pull it out. And I'll show you this little sensor, which is sticking down below the tankless heater. So it goes through this little bobbin, and it's sticking down below the tankless heater. So it's positioned right here. Let me get this back together. And push this back in. And I'll put it back. And I'll zoom in. And you can see it. So if you're wondering what this is, that is what activates the freeze protection. There we go. So, that's it right here. Comes through the bottom of the chassis, and it's that yellow wire plugged into the wire harness. Now, that will also mess up if you get a lot of rain into the system, water gets in here, or if there's a leak in the heat exchanger. It will activate and say freeze protection, but it's, and then it's a leak. You can dry that off with like a hair dryer or blowing on it or whatever you, you need to do. No, of course, no open flame. So, all right. Um, I think we covered everything, right? Yes, we covered everything. So, your first line of defense is the ceramic heaters, then the unit will fire. But then again, if it doesn't, uh, if you don't have power, it, that's not gonna work. Now. You can power this tankless with one of these. And we have done it. One of these little inverters that you plug into your power point in your vehicle. And then you could plug 110 volts into this. And this will activate the tankless heater. We have done that on certain units that need power to open up the servo valve because we had our last hurricane and people were they wanted to take cold showers but they couldn't because the shower bodies are pressure balanced so you weren't getting if they're not getting pressure on both sides the shower body won't activate so we went around with our truck plugged in we also used the jump start now here let me show you something else this thing right here and let me grab a battery Here we go. This is called Milwaukee's Top Off. It's a 175 watt power supply. It plugs in to a standard 18 volt Milwaukee battery. And then when I turn on this, as you can see, there's a little clear light that says it's got a household plug. Hit it again, it shuts off. Hit the top one. Now I have bolt. USB, small and large, so you could charge your phone. But if you plug your tankless into this, this unit right here will power your tankless, maybe for two hours. But go and look at my Yugo battery backup. That unit, that battery, and it'll be, you'll see it on my own house. And it can be put outside, it's waterproof too. So my unit is outside under my tankless. It'll power your tankless for like upwards of five to seven days of showering. And then the, he just, and I'm going to be getting this, he has this other line called Sigma, which is a 1,500, 2,500, and 4,000 watt um, power supply with, and he's sending me two 40 watt um, solar panels. 
so that your house current will power four lead acid batteries or solar will charge up these batteries and because I don't know if any of you has had this problem is that you might you don't have power but you had water because of city water but some people and I had this because they were on a farm had well water and they had no water because the well pump wasn't powered this Sigma unit can power the well pump power the tankless power your refrigerator power your PC you power battery charges for multiple hours and if it's on solar it'll just keep recharging the battery look for that video that'll be coming up all right YouTube my email will be in the this oh as far as well I didn't mention one more thing if you have and looking for a heat exchanger to purchase a heat exchanger there is many different models so what you're going to do is inside of the front panel of your tankless you're going to find this plastic packet right here there's nothing in this one why because I have it here in my hand you're going to find a package like this shoved inside of the packet what does this packet have well it has a very big piece of paper that has all of different troubleshooting guides procedures but on the back of the unit of the page has one two three four and all the part numbers an exploded view of every part screw o-ring in the tankless so you're going to go over to 143 and let me find 143 where are we heat exchanger assembly so here we go number 143 right there and you go down here to 143 right there it says heat exchanger assembly 107 zero 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 one zero and it's for an R 94 R 75 now this is R so you would look for this one here because on the packet it'll say RL 94 RL 75 so when you open this one up so let's do that because you're gonna find that most of yours are going to be an RL series, which is the new series. Let me open that up. And let's see, it is now a number 143. Look at that, they kept it. And we're going to go down to 143. And that is a 107-000109. And that is for an RL75. And then a 107-000100 is for an RL94. So I'll put those numbers in the description below. But that package right here, fold it up and it will fold right back up into its nice, neat little package. And it's got um, numbers and it's got your model number right on it. And that is inside the door, right here, right in this little package right there. And you're going to find it on every single tankless heater, no matter what model it is, what um, year it is, and what series. Okay? All right, YouTube. Um, please pass this video on to your friends, your family, your co-workers, your, your neighbors, whatever. Pass this on so they can see it, especially if they have a tankless heater. But a lot of this will work for water heaters or just general protection of your piping system in and around your home. Okay, YouTube? For those of you out there that um, have had a catastrophic problem uh, again my heart goes out to you if I could be of any help my email is below
please just email me. You can put a comment in, but email me because I get my emails like lickety split and I will answer you. Okay? And for those of you that I'll be talking to today, I look forward to speaking to you. And those of you that put comments in, thank you very much. Okay? I, I, I do this to help you. All right? You all be safe out there, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye now.